Kyrie addressed yesterday some of the points that were brought up in Jackie McMullen's ESPN story about him a few days ago, particularly the topic of his, quote, mood swings. Take a listen. You can continue to ask other people around me about what they think about me and continue to write about mood swings. Like, you know, human beings have mood swings. <laughs> like, you go home and you're, you're not happy with things or you're mad at something and you're happy. That's a mood swing. <laughs> it's okay to be human. Like, I don't have to be perfect for anyone here, nor do I have to be perfect for the public. So I'm not here to dispel any perception. I'm just here to be myself. I loved that answer <laughs> from him. That was great. What did you think? It, it did remind me a little bit of the Jim Carrey recent uh, kind of way of thinking where he said, there is no me, there is no person. Uh, there was a <laughs> detachment from everything else in the world other than what he deems valuable to himself, which is relationships with his family and friends. And, and if that works for him, that's great. But he is also a representative of the NBA, of the Nets, of Nike, of his boxer brief company. You know, there's a business thing going on here too. And to be able to actually walk through life and not have any of those things matter, opinions matter, perception matter, is a lot harder done than said. Well, and, and I agree with you, but there's, a, there's also a bit of how is he as a father? How is he as a human being, right? How does he play on the court, right? Like, yes, there are there are perceptions that, that you have to kind of, you know, get rid of, but he's never been in trouble in his life. He's never had an issue. We've never seen any extracurricular stuff with him. So it's like if, we're, if the worst thing that comes with this player is he's a bit moody or he goes through some things, I'm taking it, uh, you know, 100 times. It doesn't mean that Kyrie can't improve and then he can't work on getting better, but he's like one thing that, Everyone here knows if you're constantly searching for everyone's validation and you want everyone to like you, that is a bad place to be. And we've been critical of Kevin Durant on the other end of the spectrum yes. for that. I mean, I'll be honest, of, of all the different things Kyrie has said and done in public, I thought him taking the flat earth thing to the extent that he did, not just saying it at first you're with welcome. you. You're um, welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's Richard who evoked that from him. Um, but taking it as far as it did, because there's a point where you had actual kids sort of going to their science teachers and that kind of thing. I don't mind him being moody, and, and I'm curious to get your opinion, Richard, because you experienced with the, him with this with him during a playoff run, I think during an NBA Finals run, right, yes. where he went a few days without talking to any of you guys. And it felt like at the time, because he hadn't done something to that extreme before, there was a lot of guys feeling like, well, what's his static? What's going on? Do yeah. we have a problem here? I think people know Kyrie well enough now. If that happened now, I think in the same exact situation, people would just, on your team, would have brushed it off and been like, yeah, Kyrie's done it before, I'll do it again. Yeah, and look, there, there were things that weren't great about it, but at the end of the day, we never questioned was he going to show up on the court, right? Dennis Rodman sat here on this exact same stage and said he never talked to Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan, and they are arguably the greatest team of any decade ever. So it, you don't have to be best friends, and so a lot of us, it was out of concern, like, is Kyrie okay? And he becomes a bit of an introvert, right, in those moments. And like he said in Boston, his grandfather had passed away, and he became became an introvert and he struggled with that. That's okay to struggle with that and how everyone deals with it is very, very different. So I'm not going to be critical of Kyrie because he all of a sudden didn't show up. Now look, he didn't play great in Boston in, in the second round, that, that, that's fine, right? So you can be critical of his play, but ultimately if that's how he wants to handle things and that's how he wants to go about it, as long as you're not getting in trouble, as long as you're not causing any problems and you're a good person, which he is, you just have to accept him for him. Like, I'm not so naive to think that in the limited media interactions that we have with these players that I actually get to get a full sense of who these players are. But this is one example. My first season covering him, I felt like I got to see a little bit behind the curtain. Um, I had played basketball with his father that summer leading into the season at a fantasy basketball camp in Vegas. And I had a brief conversation with, with Kyrie. And I was like, it's cool that you know, I played with Dredd and he's still playing and it's, that you guys share this love of the game. Um, and he's able to pass it on to his son. And, and, and Kyrie said, yeah, I, I, love, I love the game. And I said, like, man, it, it must be great for you. You get to, like, do this thing you get to love, that you love every day, right. right? And he's like, well, no, I love it, and I love playing when I want to play it. Yeah. But I have to play yeah. in this scenario. So I got to see a little bit of, like, the weight of the situation that he's in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a little shred of humanity. Well, and, and one thing that Kyrie also said, though, he said that when he's done playing basketball, he might disappear. Yeah. Like he's like he's like, dude, I'm here and this is a part of it. But when I'm done, like I'm not going to continue putting myself out there. So sometimes all of this isn't for everyone. You can make we make that kind of money. You can go do whatever you like after your professional career.
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.